Welcome to the Fish House Nation podcast presented by Catch Cover, your home for ice fishing news, tips, stories, and strategies. And now, your host, Chris Larson. Welcome to the Fish House Nation podcast presented by Catch Cover. Today, our guest is Joel Nelson. And Joel is a Minnesotan and a frequent ice angler. Joel, can you tell us a little bit more about yourself and where people may be able to find you and what you do? Yeah, you bet. Thanks, Chris. So uh, I operate something called Joel Nelson Outdoors, which is, uh, uh, for lack of a better term, uh, a place where I can put all the things that I do in the fishing industry, whether it's writing, whether it's video. Uh, I work with a lot of different companies in, in the fishing industry and have, have done so for, for about 20 years now. So uh, joelnelsonoutdoors.com is a place where I try to keep all of those activities and uh, you know people can catch up with me there they can ask me anything uh, there's questions that I frequently answer put on social media so really that's uh, that's in a nutshell what I do and where I'm at. And Joel we wanted to have you on it's you know we're still got a few months before we've got ice on the lakes and people are kind of thinking about getting their stuff ready. We wanted to have you on to talk about rods and how people can pick out the best ice rod for their use. First of all, when someone's thinking about buying a rod, there's a lot of different options and places they can go. You've got the local joints, you've got um, a big box retailer, you've got online stuff. Where should people go if they're thinking about getting an ice rod? Where should they start their search? Wow. Um, it's a good question. I, um, <laughs> you know, I'm going to back up a little bit and say that, you know, when I started looking more seriously at ice rods, um, I went straight to the source, which, uh, you know, there were a lot of custom shops kind of popping up. Thorn Brothers comes to mind. Um, they were some of the first that were originating new designs, new blank technologies, different lengths, uh, powers, actions, for different species. And that was really a you know, kind of revelation back then. Uh, now, if you're going to go look for an ice rod, uh, you're pretty lucky because at numerous retail outfits, big box and independent, you can find some quality sticks out there. Um, it's not just an underground small independent shop gig only like it once was. When people are looking, I mean, there's lots of the brands that, that maybe they know, but there's also a lot of folks out there making custom rods. What are kind of the differences between buying a custom rod or buying something that may be from a, a brand that's, that's more well-known? Very good uh, question, and I'm glad you asked it because the idea of custom rods, it's, it's almost a misnomer. Um, very few rods these days are truly custom, and I guess it kind of comes back to how far back in the, in, in the build process, you want to go to call it custom. Does custom mean, you know, you get a blank from somewhere, but you do your own wraps or they do their own special twist on it, their own painting, their own threads, all that. Or does custom really mean, man, we're going to start from a single sheet of Tyvek looking carbon material and we wrap it over a steel rod mandrel and develop the blank, develop everything, dip it, paint it, the whole nine yards. And uh, really, the only manufacturer out there that I know that is truly from scratch building their own rods is St. Croix. Um, they're, they're taking that, that carbon fiber material and building the rods from scratch. Now, that's not to say that every single rod is individually made at a specific length that a customer engages, uh, specific colors, specific names and conventions. It's not custom in that sense. And previously, that's what custom made. It, it, custom was a blank that you could configure to whatever length you wanted, to whatever colors you wanted, and really add some of the finishing touches. Um, so, so the whole term custom, it's, it's kind of a weird term for me because uh, custom doesn't mean what it used to in many respects. So if someone's looking to get their first ice rod this year, or maybe just add to their arsenal, what are kind of the main things that they should think about before laying some money down on the counter? Uh, first and foremost is what do you fish for? Um, that's, that's like the first question I ask because I get that question all the time. What rod should I get? Well, what do you fish for? And then start breaking it down and really get into the weeds because it's so interesting. If you look in the open water rods market for years now, we've been customizing every angle about how we fish. 
are you jigging? Well, what kind of jigging are you doing? Are you pitching jigs out from the boat? Are you fishing directly below the boat vertically? Are you fishing deep water with heavier jigs? Are, are you fishing with light jigs? Are you fishing for panfish, walleyes? And that level of detail from the open water side is now starting to show itself on the ice rod side. So you need to take a long, hard look at the types of fishing you do for what species, what depths, what lures. And then also, where are you fishing? Are you fishing outside? Are you fishing inside? You're going to have rod length considerations to deal with there. So it really starts with kind of a full-on analysis of what you do, where you do it, and how you do it. And from there, uh, the recommendations come a little bit easier. What should an ice angler look for when they're choosing a rod for panfish? In pan fishing today, there's two main uh, powers and actions. Um, the first is is kind of a little bit more traditional. It's a little, it's slightly stiffer rod. It's still a light power but an extra fast action. And tungsten has been the rage in pan fishing, right? The tungsten jig steel, add, add some plastics. You've got the ultimate in attraction. And a, and a light power, extra fast action rod is gonna do a really good job to make that plastic just dangle and, and wiggle perfectly and give you a ton of control in the process. Now, on the other side of the pan fish realm, you've got, um, a noodle rod. Um, we've all probably heard the term noodle and power noodle is something that's been thrown about over the years. Well, all that is, is a rod with a lot of forgiveness towards the tip. It, it's a fiberglass section on the rod tip that basically allows the angler to detect the bite via sight. You watch that rod load up, you watch a panfish just tickle the end of it. But then when you go to set the hook, the back section, the butt section, that rod's extremely stiff meaning that it goes from a ton of give to no give, like instantly. So those are the two kinds of powers and actions if you're a panfish angler that I would consider. And really, a lot of it comes down to how do you detect a bite? Do, do you look at the rod tip and do you want that extra forgiving tip? And it's almost like a, you know, it's almost like a bite indicator. Or do you like more control of your lure and you like feeling the bite versus seeing it? So Really, that's kind of the two panfish sides broken down. All right. How about the walleye angler? You know, I like to fish for walleyes in two different settings and scenarios. The first is roaming the open ice. Uh, could never get enough of that. It's awesome. Big waters, drilling lots of holes, uh, dropping spoons down all over the place, jigging wraps perhaps, things like that. And in that case, I'm fishing outside. I want to be standing up. I'm looking for a slightly longer rod uh, in a medium light or a medium power but again, the fast and extra fast actions are really beneficial to putting a good hook to a walleye, especially bigger fish, right? You, you, they have hard mouths. And a lot of times spoons are small and the hooks are small. So to drive that hook home, that's what I'm looking for in a longer 32 inch plus rod, 34, 36 or longer. Now, if I'm fishing primarily inside a 36 inch rod, you know, I might set the hook and nail the furnace or <laughs> hit the ceiling fan or something like that. So we got to shorten that stick up a little bit, something like 28 inches. Um, and as a general rule, I'm, I'm trying to fish with as long a rod as possible, given any sick circumstance, whether I'm in a portable, uh, whether I'm in a permanent or whether I'm outside. What should anglers look for when choosing a rod for big fish like pike or lake trout? You know, definitely your presentation is going to bear what kind of rod you're fishing. If you're fishing for Lakers way up in the Canadian Shield and you're using ounce and a half, two ounce airplane jigs, you need a rod that can stand up to that amount of weight uh, so that it, the rod isn't sloppy and you have, you know, you don't, you maintain control of the bait, in other words. Now, pike, a lot of times, um, you don't need that much stiffness in a rod because you're fishing lures that are slightly lighter. Um, and, and in that respect, a good spinning rod, uh, again, long as possible, longer the fish, bigger the head shakes, more chance they have to put slack in the line. I'm looking for a long rod and a medium heavy, up to a heavy power. Um, again, with that fast, extra fast actions, I really prefer. Now that said, if you're fishing in slammers, in some states you can fish those automatic fishermen's automatic hook setters. You want a rod that's a little bit more forgiving, something that's fiberglass, something that has a slower action to it. So um, it's hard, as you can tell, I, I'm, I'm talking a lot about the different scenarios and really that's what it comes down to. What scenario 
do you fish with what lures for what species and what depths? Yeah, we've been talking species. And the next thing I was going to ask you is how much is the, the depth of water that you're fishing in? How much does that play into it and, and what they should look at? You know, one guy that maybe is fishing a lot of uh, shallow lakes, maybe he's in 10 feet of water compared to somebody who's out in, in the deep lakes that are, you know, they're, they're dropping down 40, 50 feet. You know, uh, it's a good question. I think presentation has as much to bear as anything. Deeper the water, typically the heavier the jig or the heavier the lure, uh, in which case you need a heavier power on the rod. And it's funny because we're really getting into the weeds here. We're talking species specific, depth specific, and people say, hey, you know, aren't you going a bit overboard? I've fished with the same rod for walleyes my whole life. And the, que and the answer I always have is, but perhaps, you know, uh, to each their own, you know, get as specific as you want. But I, I always liken it to a screwdriver. You know, I can use a screwdriver as a hole punch. I can use a screwdriver to, you know, <laughs> Phillips heads, straight heads, whatever. Um, but the right size screwdriver for the right application is going to do a much better job. Uh, it can be a hole punch with a hammer, but, you know, the more specific you get with your tools, uh, typically the better end user experience you're going to have when you go ahead and fish with it. Yeah, I think we probably need to kind of clear that up. Obviously, you know, we've all caught northern pike while jigging for bluegills, and, and sure. you can catch anything on anything, but what we're talking about today, I think, is setting up the best possible solution for someone's needs. I think that's what we're talking about because, yeah. you know, as, as you said, you know, you can catch just about anything on just about anything, yep. you know, if everything aligns perfectly for right. you. But what we're trying to do is, is, is maximize your potential for success here. No, um, no doubt about it. Yeah. You spend enough time on the water and you're going to encounter days where it doesn't matter what you're fishing, right? Like you can catch them on anything. It doesn't matter, but you're also going to encounter a lot of days especially towards midwinter when it gets tougher, where the right lure with the right power length and action, it, it's not just about comfort anymore. It's not just about preference anymore. It's literally about detecting more bites and catching more fish because you've got a superior system to either detect the bites, to present the lure, to uh, target the species at the depths that they're at with the lures that you're fishing. Those, those are little tweaks that, again, it's not just academic at that point. It, it's actual. Sure. You, you kind of talked about length there. What length should you be looking for when you're out shopping for a rod? You know, very common to see 28 inch to 32 inch lengths um, all across the board. If I'm in a hard side house or if I'm in my otter, a portable, um, I'm looking in that ballpark. I lean towards 32s when I can get away with it. Extra length gives you more leverage on a bigger fish, allows more room for head shakes, keeps that line tight in those situations. But when I'm out on the open ice, um, longer, always better. Um, in fact, the biggest uh, hampering to length is rod cases. And, you know, a 38, 39 inch rod fits just inside most 40 inch rod cases. But in some instances, uh, it'd be nice to go even longer, especially big pike or lake trout, 42 inches, 46. I mean, you can get really wild with it, but um, those are kind of the common links that you see quite often. But I see a trend in longer rods on ice in general. Joel, we've been talking a lot about all the different scenarios an angler might be dealing with on the ice and the different options available. How many rods should the average person have? You know, uh, really depends how many species and situations they fish. If you're a multi-species angler, um, I'll tell you what I have, and I go all over the place, right? I mean, I'm fishing for panfish one week and walleyes the next and varying kinds of panfish. Sometimes, uh, you know, bluegills up in shallow weeds, and then I'll go fish crappies and open basins. And um, I've got two rod boxes, uh, and basically I stuff them full. So... That is literally 10, 12 rods. That's extreme. I don't think your average angler um, would ever want to own that many rods. It's a lot to maintain and keep up. That said, it just it, it, it's like a full toolbox again. I keep going after this, this analogy because the more tools or the more weapons you have, um, the better chance you are going to better match the right presentation with the right rod at the right time. But I think an angler who is maybe an avid panfish angler could get away with two rods. 
maybe three, depending on how many different looks they wanted. I mean, in some respects, it's an expensive kind of luxury to have, but to have another rod rigged up with a different presentation ready to drop on that same fish, well, sometimes that's going to get you 90% of your bites, the second drop with a different bait. So um, really, it's a lot of personal preference. And if you're fishing a bunch of different species and you're going all over and they're widely varied, 10 to 12 rods isn't out of the question, but if you're fishing primarily a single species or a single type of fishing on the same lake, yeah, two to three rods might be all you need. We've covered a lot, Joel. Is there anything I didn't ask you about looking for an ice rod that you want to talk about? You know, um, one thing I will mention when it comes to ice rods, um, reels are important too, as is the line. You know, it's all kind of a system that works together. Um, the worst thing you could do is spend just an unbelievable amount of money on the fanciest custom rod on the planet, but then find a junker reel and it's like an old egg beater and it's heavy and it weights the thing down and it's poorly balanced. I think spend some time researching your reels, finding you know reels that are lightweight. Uh, if you're going to buy up to a custom rod, um, make sure you pair it with the right stuff because uh, you know it's really going to make the rod's performance suffer. Um, that, and I'd also like to mention if you're ever confused about what rod to purchase for what, what length, what power, what action, uh, St. Croix Rods on their website has a descriptor that basically lays out the perfect rod in their minds and in our minds for the job. So they're named Sight Bite. Well, that's a sight fishing rod and it's a little bit shorter it's a little bit more stout. It's designed for sight fishing. So whether it's a St. Croix that you end up buying or not, you can always go to that site and get the right rod recommendations at the right lengths, the right powers, the right actions for the job. So uh, call that a little cheat sheet, call it, uh, call it what you will. But, you know, that's helped me personally uh, learn from the benefit and experience of other anglers to figure out what rod I should be fishing and when. Joel, thanks for your insight. We talked earlier about how people can find you, and I know you're on Instagram too. What's your Instagram handle? I am at Joel Nelson Outdoors, and on Facebook, it's just facebook.com slash Joel Nelson Outdoors. And uh, again, the website, www.joelnelsonoutdoors.com as well. All right. Thanks so much, Joel. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Fish House Nation podcast presented by Catch Cover. For more ice fishing content, visit our blog at catchcover.com.